don't miss any content, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Hey guys, welcome back to Sahara Football. As usual, I am your host, Selassie Fiawe. Today, we're going to listen to legendary Black Stars captain and part of the technical team now, Steven Tornado Apia. I ran a poll on this channel finding out who Ghanaians thought was the best Black Stars captain ever. And most of you voted for Steven Apia. Yesterday, in an interview with Joy News, Joy Sports, he talked about his career as a player. He also talked about how his career as a Juventus player ended. And it was because he decided to play for Ghana. He'll give you more details in this interview. It's quite a lengthy interview. He also talks about the current crop of Ghanaian captains. That's Andre Ayu and Asamwajan. He talks about the one time in 2010 when he even was the one who predicted that Kwesia Pia would one day lead the Ghana Black Stars. Kwesia Pia then promised him to make him part of his technical team. So many things he talked about in his time coming up from Accra to Fuk moving to italy and so on so let's go have a listen to that interview steven apia the best captain of the ghana black stars according to you guys let's go have a listen no not at all because uh playing for a class of folk itself it, it was it, it was a big deal and, yeah for me mm. so uh, i was i was really enjoying myself uh, at a class of folk and i was doing very very well i mean uh playing with great players and i was the youngest youngest uh, uh player in the team and i was enjoying myself they were uh, uh, encouraging me that i i mean i will be uh, if i continue playing like the way i'm playing i will be a, a better player in in the future um yeah the uh, youth team is, honorable youth team is, uh, gave me a letter and i joined um the team in camp uh, in winneba so I started to trade with the with the team, and you see one thing about me. Uh, when it come it comes to certain things, I do I do accept and agree with the things because they were in camp already. Yeah, Kuchade, the late Kuchade. God bless his soul. Yeah, has his team already, but because of my performance at a class of folk, it looks as if no, we have to give this guy a chance because I was playing so well. So uh, they gave me a letter. I joined the team in Winneba. I started to train with the team. I mean, you have players like Christian Saba, Baba Sule, uh, Atakra Meniampon, Imane Bentel, and the rest. Abu Idris, Abu De Isaka. And these are the players that they have been in camp for like two years. So I joined the camp and uh, I started to train with them. But the late coach Adi saw something in Steven Apia. So although it was difficult for, 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 for coach to exclude me from the team, uh, he wanted to give me a chance as well. Okay, sure. So uh, as you said, they traveled to Munich, Oberhausen. I wasn't part of the, the, the team. Actually, three days before the travel, I was sick. I got sick, so uh, they traveled uh, without Stephen Apia. And I was like, I was so scared that I mean, this is the hand of. I'm the not player. going to be part yeah. of the the the, 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 the squad. But uh, later, uh, I got a call from uh, Oyinba Charles. So we flew, uh, we flew with and uh, Thompson. We flew to uh, Munich, and I joined the team there. Wow, interesting stuff there. Um, you 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 did not necessarily. You were not necessarily one of the big names of the tournament. But um, what is your biggest takeout from that particular tournament? Your biggest lesson learned from um, Ecuador, you know, 1995? Well, I think uh, it's, it's uh, understanding. Understanding, as I said, players were there before uh, uh, I joined the, 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 the squad. And players who are doing very, very well. I mean, when you mentioned Baba Sule, Abu Idris, and Abu Dhabi, yeah, like. it's, it's, it's <laughs> difficult. Although I, I was doing so well with yeah. the class of Uba, it, it's very, very difficult. And um, at a point, even in Winneba, I was the one who, who, who used to wash their, their clothes. I used to clean their boots. Tell and me about it. Yes, I haven't regretted it because, you see, when I say these kind of things, it makes me feel good. Some people, they feel shy to say certain. No, it makes me feel good because even the Bible tells you that before you be great, you have to serve. And some of us, we serve. We are still serving. 
I see. You see our senior players, we bow. I see. Yeah. You washed their of clothes. Of course, of course. I, I was the one who used to wash their dresses and shoes. I but see. they say, yeah. I see. Yeah, so, um, yeah, um, so we traveled to Ecuador. I played only one, one match. The match that I played because we qualified already. So, uh, uh, Coach Adi, I mean, gave me the chance to have a feel of the tournament. I remember when we played against USA, Coach Adi was doing his selection, and when he got to number eight, he said, <laughs> He said, GF in my eight, even up here, you know. Coach Adi has his own way of doing selection. Okay. He will be mentioning him like, okay, I will do When you cut the ball, throw it to Kwekuchi, that he's doing okay. his selection. Yeah. So when you go to my team, he said, GF in my eight, Stephen Apia. <laughs> Stephen Apia. <laughs> in a match, I'm going to open your trap. Stephen, open your trap. And everybody was laughing. And you see, I think there's one thing about me. I always think that. I'm good in yeah. the positive way. I yeah. don't say that because I want to feel big or I'm good. So I have that positive attitude. So he, when he started doing Stephen Obano try, if he is somebody else, the person will be stuff Yeah, you yeah. understand. Yeah. So that 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 energized me and mm. I mean that game I was the man of the match. Yeah. I was the man of the match and I mean it, it it was it was a good tournament and uh we won the trophy 95 and i remember when we came back to accra 22nd august to, uh 95 uh the next day we went to floating with the with the trophy to show Ghanaians the trophy at the cross sports stadium coach Adi, when he was giving his speech he said although we won the tournament there is this young boy who didn't get the chance to play but in the future is going to be one of the great players in ghana mm. they always say never ever joke with the words of a man who has passed on well um, you you got your opportunity to play in in italy uh, after that and uh, you started off your life there um you know how easy was it fitting in you know you had gotten yourself into a new environment and all of that oh you mean in italy yeah um going to italy itself was 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 a big deal to me because uh 97 i was as i said i was doing so well with a class of folk i was enjoying uh the fans every everywhere i go steven appear steven appear actually they they used to call me baby jesus after scoring kotoko uh two at a class sports stadium so they they gave me that name and we played against gapoa in tema after the game i scored i scored i scored a goal after the game i saw uh nick Bese with uh a white man so nick Bese called me and he said that oh the white man said that you are so good so uh he wanted, so um he said uh, okay the white man said you are you are you are very very good and he wanted to take you to to italy um at that time i didn't want to go because as a young guy enjoying myself in ghana uh i didn't want to go but uh with a small push from the class of uh, board of directors i said okay let me let me let me travel to italy for for my trials when i was i was traveling uh it was in february and we all know that in february in europe is the coldest month in europe so when i was traveling um i didn't know anything about the weather so i was wearing just a t-shirt and uh, and uh, and and, and uh, um, Karkani pant uh, borrowed from a friend. <laughs> 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 borrowed from a friend and uh, Nike uh, Nike trainers. So uh, we took off from Ac uh, Accra to Mapensa because I'm going to Udine. Udine, you have to do a transit in, in Mapensa, Milano to Tresti. So when we got to when we got to when we arrive in uh, at milano so we have to get down and those days you don't go through any uh a tunnel you have to just get down and then the bus will come and pick you to uh your gate so i mean everybody was looking at me i think that they were they were saying that is, is this guy serious because it's very very cold and i'm wearing a t-shirt so from there i managed to 
to go to my gate and then uh, we flew to Tristy. When I got there, the team manager of Undinese was there. Uh, his name is Lorenzo Tofolini. He picked me and then uh, we went to the training ground. So I saw the team training and I saw a black guy uh, training with the team. Can you imagine? I didn't even know that it was Mohamed Gagu because, I mean, that time we don't watch the Syria high. And yeah. So uh, they finished training and then Gago walked to me and he said, uh, welcome. And I said, thank you. And he said, okay, I'll see you later. So um, they took me to my hostel uh, with four of the junior, junior players. And, uh, you know, it was very, very difficult because I didn't know anything. I don't have a clue about the food. Yeah. I mean, the pizza, the spaghetti, you know, all this food. I, 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 I've never seen that before, you understand? So, uh, what I was eating was bread and ice cream. That's why, it. yeah, that's why till today, when they, they want to make fun of me, they, they call me the gelato boy, gelato the boy, ice cream actually. ice cream boy. So, that was what I was eating, but it was very, very tough because you don't speak the language, no clue with their food, no clue with their game, but... As a young African, seeing yourself there, you have to do everything possible to stay. And then I, uh, I did my trials for two weeks, and then I signed my contract. How long did it take you to learn Italian? Uh, you speak Italian. Yeah, I speak very good Italian. I know. I even write be very good Italian. I see. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Yes. How long did it take you to, to, to learn? Honestly, um... I didn't go to Italian school, mm. but I think I was lucky because I played uh, with the at the junior side. Okay. So going out with the junior players, that's where that's where I learned, and I think that I'm I'm am I'm, I'm a fast learner. So uh, I got I got it right. Um, you know, in 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 that time when you were a very young player, you you unlike many other players had gotten that opportunity, and you had done your trials in uh, Udine and and played. Um, the, the the total experience at Udinese, uh, getting inspiration from Mohamed Gago, who at a point feigned an injury so you could get a chance to play. Well, uh, Nath, um, when I was even playing course, I think Steve Napier is a guy who loved to train. Yeah. Before we would train, I would go to the beach to run before I would join the the, the, the team to train with. And the same thing happened when 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 I traveled to Italy. The junior team, we, we train 10 o'clock, and at times with the fog, with the snow, I have to get up and go to jogging, come back, take my shower, and go and train with the junior side. So uh, I did everything possible. I did everything possible to, everything to stay. And I think that, uh, as I said, uh, it was the training. It was the training that, uh, that gave me the, 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 the chance because, you know, Italian football, that time it was more phys ph uh, physical. Yeah. So uh, you have to be ready. And uh, that's what I did. Wow, interesting stuff. And then you got yourself into Juventus. Uh, Juventus, a side that uh, had big names, big, big names. You know, established guys, you know, who, whose presence you know, could intimidate you. How did you psych yourself up to, to live with all of these guys and bring out the excellence? You know, the other day I was just watching a few clips and, um, you know, I was watching you and the way you conducted yourself on the pitch and how you controlled affairs in the midfield. It was just amazing. How did you psych yourself up to, to fit in and fit in well? Well, uh, okay, from, from Undinese, and I always let me, let me, let me give a shout out to my, my senior brother, Mohamed Gago. Mm. Uh, as you stated earlier on, uh, before I signed my contract, I mean, I want to go back a bit. Okay. Before I signed my contract, Udinese played against a team from Austria. Austria, okay. Yeah, uh, Strom Grass. So, it was a friendly game and that was my first time, the first time they invited me to join the senior team. So, the game was going on like 15 minutes to the end of the game. Uh, Mohamed Gago uh, faked uh, an injury for me to to get a chance and 
uh, they gave me the chance five minutes to full time i scored from uh, a goal from 30 meters wow so uh no sorry 25 meters so the next day i saw my picture all over the newspapers so i went to i got one of the newspapers and i went to mohammed gago's house because he speaks he speaks italian so i asked him what are they saying about me well, i mean i don't understand what is written in there and then he said that the coach said cancella la porta no follow scapare close the door and don't let him run away so wow. i mean the, the 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 coach gave me shout out there because uh, i played the 50 minutes that i played i think the coach was uh was satisfied with my performance that and then the next day uh, i signed with undinese talking about uh, juventus i want to go because after undinese i played parma of course of course, yeah I parma remember. and uh that time parma is one of the richest club in 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 italy in italy yeah. that they have played their goalkeeper was buffon you have uh because they play three five two they have uh lillian turam canavaro benarivo was the captain and then you have uh, nakata bogosian hidatoshi nakata you mean yeah nakata bogosian uh, you have uh, dino baggio uh, junior from brazil um, then you have uh, milosovic and amoroso so uh yeah um i signed for parma i was so happy because i mean that time they have a good team i joined uh parma and i played for one year they signed a coach another coach the coach came and then uh i mean he too he wanted to bring some new players so i end up uh going to brescia brescia so i went to brescia for loan for one year uh i think in my career i always say that brescia is i mean my best season in my career why am i saying that because brescia is a small team uh but that year 2003 2004 we did so well we even placed six in the in the league and i mean a team like brescia playing placing six in the league is it, 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 so huge for them because uh that time i mean looking at ac milan juventus fiorentina and the rest we, we were not even expecting to 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 be in that position and i was so lucky that time to play with guardiola and uh, uh roberto baggio that season i scored uh eight goals i scored eight goals because when you are playing with uh, players like uh roberto baggio and guardiola they make things uh, easier for you to 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 put as a as a midfielder to put the balls in the net so from brescia i was I came to to Ghana for my 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 uh, uh, break. I was there, and Lilian Turam called me and said that Luci Luciano Moji is going to call me, and I was like Luciano Moji. He said yes, Luciano Moji is going to call you. Luciano Moji was the the director for Juventus. Uh, I mean, he, he's a big man in in when it comes to football in Italy. I mean, he's the man. So he called me and he started talking. Uh, Stephen, Costa Staffacendo. Stephen, what are you doing? I said, I'm at home uh, with my family. He said, Okay, tu vuoi venire alla Juve? You want to come to Juventus? And I was like, What a question! Of course, <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> Juventus is Juventus. I said, uh, Yes. They told me, Yes, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to come to Juventus. He said, Okay, I will call you back. So um, I was there, and then two weeks to to finish my 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 break, uh, they said um, I have to come to Torino. So I went to Torino and I did my medical, sorry, Very well. Very medicals, well. and then uh, yeah, I signed for Juventus. The bit about retirement. There's a question about your 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 retirement. Whether you feel, when on hindsight, whether you feel it was rushed, or no. or it was pressure, or you know no i've been i've been a player when i was playing uh somebody who always want to give not even 100 percent 110 percent so after my 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 injury um i was i was i was feeling i wasn't feeling the way um i was playing although i was i was doing my best just that 
uh, I wasn't giving hundred percent. So it got to a time, and I said I have to listen to my body and 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 retired. And that's that that's what I did. It wasn't it wasn't pressure from anywhere. I I was sitting actually I was sitting in my porch, and then uh, I called my friend uh, 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 Fifi Taki and uh, 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 Opari Otu. So uh, I told them that uh, I'm sitting here. I mean. Uh, and a lot of things are going through my mind and I don't feel like continue to play anymore. I want to retire. So I called them and then I just put something on, 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 on Instagram. That, that's my retirement. I see. Yeah. You, you put your message of yeah, retirement on, on, Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. I see. Yeah. During the period, I mean, to between 2003 to, towards 2004, you got the opportunity to... Um, you know, to lead the Black Stars. Before that, uh, you know, Ghana had played in, in, in the Olympics. We played against Italy and uh, it, it gave you a bit of trouble, you know, um, you know back at your club. Yeah. Now, about that story, um, did you get any, you know, any um, attitude from, from the fans? Because you are, you are heavily adored in Italy. Now that 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 period when we played against Italy, those goals were scored and all of that. Um, oh, did you did you notice that the fans were pulling from you because on a regular day, if you're on the street, people come up to you, take pictures, uh, autographs, and all of that. Did it also affect the love that the fans had for you, the the club fans had for you? Well, my first season, uh, I, as I said, I played so well, mm. and then um, I went. To, we went to a training camp. That was the second season. Okay. So 2005, 2006 season. So after our training camp, um, I got an invi invitation from from the FA that uh, I have to I have to go for the Olympics. And when the letter arrived at Juventus uh, Secretariat. Um, they didn't want me to go because the league will, the league will start 8th, 8th of August and I have to leave 4th of August to uh, to uh, Athens. So Luciano Moji, Bettega and Giraudo. Giraudo is the lawyer, Juventus lawyer. So they invited me and when, I mean, Luciano Moji invited you, that means that it's a serious uh, a, a, a case. So they invited me to to their office, and then they started to talk. Oh, we're going to start the league. It's not nice that you are you are going to leave us to to go for the Olympics. So I told them that okay, you know what? Let me go and think about it. Give me a day or two. And then Luciano Modi was like, No, I'm not going to give you two days. You go home, think about it. The next day, come and tell me what you're going to do. So I was there, and then the next day, Luciano Moji called me and said that, uh, are you ready? You want to come to the to the office? I said, okay, after training, I'll come to the office. He said, no, 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 you have to, because they tried to put pressure on me. Sure. So I went to, I gathered confidence. I went to the office, and I told them that, three of them, I told them that, yeah, I know, I love Juventus. Juventus has given me the platform. I've played my first season. I play so well. The name Steven Apia now because of Juventus is different. Now everybody knows Steven, Steven Apia. So, uh, but one thing that I can say is whatever I do, my country comes first. So I want to go to Athens. I went to Athens, I came back, and that's the end of Steven Apia. <laughs> <laughs> when you were appointed as captain of the Black Stars, one of the first people you had a conversation with was Richard Oledi Kingston because he was senior to you in the team. How easy was it working with a player who was more experienced than you were in the Black Stars team, especially when you had to whip everybody into line? And how much cooperation did you get from the likes of him? Well, it was it was it, it started when we played against Slovenia in Ljubljana. Mm. That was uh, 70, 22nd, 22nd May. 2002 so um, the team the the team coach was doing his selection I mean that was the day of the match was doing his selection and when he finished he said today our captain is Steven Apia and I raised my hand I said uh, coach I think uh, Olile is a senior player so 
I mean, to give the band, I think that Olele, uh, uh, the band should go to Olele. Uh, Olele was there? Yeah, he was, was there. there. He was sitting next to me because he was my roommate. Yeah. So, uh, the band should go to Olele. Olele tapped my shoulder and said, uh, Stephen, don't worry, we'll support you. We'll just take the band. So, uh, that's where it started. But I think um, when they gave me the band, after our game against uh, Slovenia, I quite remember I was in my room and I started to call all the the, the, the senior players. I called Abedi Pele was the first person I called. I told him that now they have made him, they have made me the captain of the national team, so I need an ad advice from him. So he advised me. What did he say to you? Uh, he said that uh, yeah, it's going to be difficult. There will be moments that uh, it's not everybody decisions or the things that I would do. It's not everybody who is going to accept it, but if 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 I decided to do something as the leader, I should I should I should do it. That's the the, the kind of uh, advice that he gave me, and he said that I shouldn't worry because uh, if you are born a leader, you are born a leader. As I said, even when they gave me the band, I said no, the band should go to Olele, but even Olele said, Stephen, you take the band, we'll give you the support. So after talking to Abedi Pele, I called uh, Tony Yeboa, I called Tony Bafo, uh, Ose Kufo, CK Akono. I called all of, the, all of them and then they gave me their blessing. Wow, interesting. Okay, what, okay. What, did you say, what did you say to the, the guys before, you know, the last thing that you said to them before you got on the pitch? Take okay, well, um, after uh, Olele prayed, uh, we were about to go to, 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 the, to the pitch. We, we were about to leave the dressing room actually. So, when we were leaving, I stopped and at times I do it deliberately because I want to get everybody's attention. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, we were going I said, no, 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 guys, wait. I said, this is the time. We have been praying for this all these years. This is what Ghana, Ghanaians wanted to see. We are not here because we just qualified to add up to the numbers. We are here to prove a point. And... Everybody started shouting. But you see, and I, I knew that we we're going to do well in that that, that 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 tournament. That tournament. Because that time the boys that I mean the players that I played with, it looks as if they I mean the camp is like um uh, the spirit of winning was with us at that particular time because when you see we played against Burkina Faso, I want to take you back. Yeah. The only match that we lost during the qualifiers was Burkina Faso. The friendly games that we played from against Jamaica in Leicester, yeah. against Korea in 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 uh, in Edinburgh, we we won all the matches and then we we were on a certain level. Yeah. Yes, we didn't have the experience because it was our first time. But these are players who, the players that we're going to play against are the players that we meet in Champions League, Europa Cup and the rest. We played league against those players. So the confidence level was very, very high. And, I mean, we lost our, uh, our first game against Italy 2-0. What, 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 what contributed, I mean, what was the factor that you'd point out that contributed to that loss? Because, as you say, I mean, from the dressing room, there was a lot of confidence. You knew what it was. You had spelt it out clearly to your teammates. Everybody was on the same page. I'm not going to say inexperience, but I think we were... The concentration was not... Not there 100%. Okay. That, that's, the, that's the only thing that I can, I can remember in that game. Because the, pl the game that we played against Italy... We play better than them. We run more than them. We did everything. But you see, when you go to tournaments like this, Ghana, we've been, it's been our first, first uh, World Cup. You, you lack one or two things. And Italy, they have been there so many years. So I always say that, you see, you have the spirit that you played in a league, the league itself. You move to Europa League, it's, it's not the same. It's a different spirit. You move to Champions League, it's a different spirit. And then the World Cup itself. And it was our first time. The experience was not 
there but the materials were there i mean the players as i said we lost a bit of concentration because the two the the ball that uh pillow shot that is called the first goal and then the second goal we made a mistake and then uh they scored but when you watch the game 90 minutes they didn't have any chance they didn't have any chance we played we played all the game and after that game we went to the dressing room and that gave us the 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 the, the confidence that um we can do something in that tournament i think everybody who will get the chance to lead has something positive to happen and uh i think uh after after steven appear was uh john mensa mm. he did he did very well uh after john mensa samwajan uh he also did very well i mean in the african cup i think they got to the finals they played in the finals we, we didn't have a chance to when i was with the team i didn't have a chance to to play in the finals so i think um yeah they did well i've been in camp with them and i can see the way they they, they handle the players the way they go about things uh, yeah they did their best they did their best now you look at um i mean Andre Ayu is still captain, so we can't talk much about, you know, we can't do a full assessment because he's not done with his stint as captain of the Black Stars. We can at least talk about the, the others. I mean, John Mensah, we could talk about, especially Asamoah Chan. Um, I sit back and look at, you know, the switch. You know, he was there, you know, and then you're a general captain. This is the substantive captain. And then there's the bit... The, there's a, a reference that we can make from Cameroon where Rigober's song was still around and they said, you know something, you are general and, um, you know, uh, Eto is the captain, you know. We're all human beings. Sometimes these things get to us. Do you f from where you sit, you, you, you have a feeling that um, Asamoah will be as happy as you, you are. When, when you speak to him, what, what does he say about his time, you know? I don't, actually, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. That's the only thing that I would say. But I think that being a general captain, the same thing happened to me in 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 South Africa. Exactly. And I was I was John very, was yeah, yeah I was very very happy. I was very very happy because at the end of the day, it's Ghana. It's not. You see, handling a band is not a personal thing. Okay. You can go to warm up. You can get hurt. Somebody will take the band. So it's not like a private thing. So I was happy because. With John Mensah, whatever the decisions in camp, I was the one. Uh, 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 I wasn't taking it, but I mean, you see, you are. Uh, they said general. Not to take. Stephen, Stephen, tell me about that role. What What is that role? The general captain and the substantive captain. What do you do as a general captain? No, I think. Uh, they want, no, they, no, I can't educate you because um, they said general. Me. I'm, I'm talking about how I say it. You being a senior player, and you have, you can still take decision or you can share ideas with the with the with the captain itself. Impressive. And I think that's what I did with John Mensa in 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 South Africa. So when it comes to general, I don't know what is general captain. You are a senior player. You are the captain. At times, even captains will say that. Okay, is it is it a format you will you will readily, you know, considering what you know in football, is it a format you would really want to work with that, that a team should have a general captain? Because you're you are saying that... No, that from, decision will come from... Yeah. yeah. From your end, you know, um, if you were to give advice to, to a team, for instance, is it a structure that you would advise to have a general captain and a substantive captain as well? Yeah, that's why I'm saying that. A general ca yeah, I think yes. Because a, a, a general captain is like you are still there and then you still giving advice you still you can still take decisions so you have to work with the uh, the captain mm. the the one that they they have given the band to that's why i'm saying that that's what i did with uh, uh john mensa and i mean it was it was fantastic in 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 in, in south africa mm. Andrea, you have done some work so far. He's also wearing the number 10 jersey. He's doing his bit. Um, what, would, what do you make of him so far? Um, Andre, when it comes to Andre, I think 
he's a leader the way he talks the way he hurts uh, the way he do his things okay you can see that he, he said a leader doesn't mean that you have to you have to do magic on the pitch everybody has his own uh, 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 his own moments some people think that okay because uh, somebody is where Maradona is wearing the number 10 is the best player he should be the leader you can I mean you can give the band to Maradona but maybe leadership skills he doesn't have and we have some players like Henry Asamoah did his best Asamoah did so well like but we are talking about Dede like Andre, I think I see I see is somebody who always wanted to win and I always refer to Steven Gerrard. Steven Gerrard was doing so well. You see the, the Liverpool players, they were running and doing everything. They want to die. They don't want to die for anybody. They, they see the captain giving everything on the pitch. So the players will see, be like, okay, our leader is doing this. We too, we have to try and support him. So when it comes to Andre, I think uh, he has leadership skills. And uh, till now, yeah, we went to Egypt. Things didn't go well as we, we wanted. But uh, yeah, I see, I, I see a good leader. Great stuff. Um, when you sit back and do an assessment of what happened in Egypt with our Nations Cup campaign, I mean, how do you feel about it? We... I mean, there were very heavy expectations, but, um, you know, we, we, we just couldn't cut it. Well, we can't bring it back. I think uh, we went to a tournament with the idea of uh, going far, and uh, it, didn't, it didn't happen. And uh, we can't do anything about it now, but uh, being part of the technical team... Uh, we were we were expecting that we'll go we will we'll go far but you see one thing that we have to we have to know today it's not like the football of 20 years 25 years 22 years 30 years football that it looks as if argentina is going to play against ghana so definitely argentina is going to win it's not it's, it's not it's not like that anymore everybody is ready so i think we went to a tournament and the 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 the, the, the countries who who were ready I mean, we, 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 we saw them. Mm. You, you played a role as um, a technical coordinator of the team. Um, take us into your, your role, you know, in, in the Black Stars. Uh, you know, you, you yourself, uh, Olele Kingston, you know, um, Ibrahim Tanko and the like, everybody played a role in the backroom staff. So as technical coordinator, what, what was your role? Yeah. Well, um, as a coordinator, a coordinator is, 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 is the center man from who coordinate between the players the management the coach everybody so uh if something should happen in camp uh, most of the time i'm the one who the players will talk to and then i will send the message to to the management uh or the coach and my my job there was not only coordinating but i mean at times before games uh, i try to talk to the players i meet players and we we share ideas i talk to them one-on-one uh, try to motivate them and, and us. But as a coordinator, you are the center man. Everything comes comes through you and go go out of have um, have exited. As in, you are not playing your roles anymore. Tell me about your working relationship with Kwesi Apia, the, the personal relationship as well. How did it go? Um, it went well. It went well. Um, I remember 2010 when we played against uh, was he was he against Germany? No, yeah, one of the matches. So I mean, we we were going in the bus and then uh, uh, I told Coach that oh he was so happy after the game. So I told Coach that uh, don't worry. Uh, in the future, I mean, you'll be our uh, you'll be the coach of the Black Stars and. Uh, I know that you do well, and then there is it, w it was like okay, don't worry. If if I become the coach, uh, you'll be part of uh, I mean the technical team. I see. Um, and and it came to pass. 
it came to pass not because uh, he did me a favor because he, he knows the quality that I have. He has been in camp with me. He knows my relationship with the with the with the players. So uh, when they appointed him as the as the coach of the Black Stars, uh, he called me and he said that the moment has come and he wanted me to be part of the technical team. So um, yeah, we worked hand in hand. Uh, everything was very very cool in camp. Uh, he's a type who listens. We listen to him. He's a type who does are hoping when you have a suggestion, you can go to him and and uh, and talk to him about about it. And uh, now he's not the coach anymore, but we we, we still talk. Are you saying that you never had any points of disagreement, as in you know? you had differing opinions no 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 i mean at the end of the day he's the boss so you give him your suggestion you you bring your opinions but at the end of the day he has to take the decisions and i think that uh, uh yeah that's what happened but we have never ever uh had any problem like arguments and stuff in camp in recent days we've heard about you know how the ghana fa or the min the sports ministry owes uh coach question up here money you um what about you you've you've done some work for the for the national team so everybody wonders are you is all sorted regarding you know your your package your remuneration for doing what you did playing your role well in the in the uh i mean let me say the heat of the moment whatever is going on i don't i don't just want to to involve myself now mm. whatever is 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 happening uh i think they are talking about it i might have a problem other uh colleagues might have a problem but uh, i think uh not everything that you have to come on here to to talk about so uh we're trying to uh solve our own differences yeah there's a picture of you pointing at uh you know at someone yeah. very cl uh, close range yeah. he was looking away and you looked pretty upset yeah, yeah. you know what yeah. was that what were you telling okay, him? okay so after shot? the extra time after yeah. the extra time yeah we have to go for penalty shootouts yeah. so well um talking about racism i've never i've never experienced that but i've been in games that um other players were booed and all that uh i mean it's not it's not a good thing i mean at the end of the day, i quite remember when we play against Kevo verona a game and uh the fans were booing uh turam one of the juventus players went to one of the Kievo Verona player to hold his hand because the guy came from uh, Brazil is 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 black so we were like okay if you are booing us you have a player in your team who is also black so that means that you are disrespecting your 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 player as well so um when it comes to me I've never experienced uh, experienced that uh life in Italy was was was, was good I've learned a lot um especially playing with players like Roberto Baggio and Guardiola with their advice moving to Juventus where um you are handling so well where uh, the name is so big that you can you can try to show off but you go to those clubs and you see players like Di Piero who are not even driving a Ferrari they drive a Fiat Uno and living a simple life so i think that's the things that i pick uh, from Italy. So there you have it guys, Steven Tornado up here uh, telling us about his playing career and so many things we did not know about the man himself. Let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments box. What did you think of this interview he shared? But before I leave, I'll leave with you five things he said he learnt as being a leader of the Ghana national team that is the Black Stars. These are the five things he has learnt, leadership lessons he has learnt being captain of the black stars first of all one of them is empathy now empathy putting yourself in people's shoes to understand them also he talked about communication the people you are dealing with are human beings not animals talk to them hear their side of the story always consider them before making decisions he talked about courage not every decisions what every decision you will take as a leader will be popular but if you really believe it is the right thing you should have to you would have to go ahead with it never stop learning in life i have learned that you knew <clears throat> what you knew yesterday maybe no more 
relevant today. So leaders must always invest in educating themselves all the time. And finally, humility. No matter how high you are, you must still remain a servant as a leader. It is only when you serve that you can be a good leader. Thank you for those nuggets of wisdom, Stephen Tornado Apia. I'm sure all of you learned a thing or two about the man himself. Let me know your thoughts in the comments box. I'll see you guys in the next one. Enjoy your day.